My people, my people, it's about that time. Like a boss. Live from the USA helping you get paid every day. This is the boss of Bitcoin, the Cristo of crypto. It's your boy BK. And if you don't like me, you must not like money. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Today, we are doing a uh, live price prediction for Bitcoin. A lot of people are saying that Bitcoin can reach 100,000 of them fangs before the end of the year. And we go see if it's in the charts, if it's, if it's in the energy. And uh, most importantly, help you profit from the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of humanity. So if this is your first time tuning in, congratulations, baby. You are now rocking with the best. My name is BK, also known as the Crypto Trader, and I'm the boss of these charts, as you will soon find out. Every day I grace this microphone with my voice as another day you get to profit as a result, and today is no exception. So if you haven't done it already, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, turn your notifications on. I come on seven days a week because the markets don't sleep, so the boss go come on and help you get a piece of the pie to eat. Uh, that's what I do. That's my mission, to help as many people make as much money as possible. And one of the ways I do it is I give away free Bitcoin every single Friday. I pick out a random comment shouting out their city and I give away some free BTC. So uh, today is going to be Thursday. If you want to win some free Bitcoin this week, you got one more day. Every video I do is a new opportunity to win. Jump in the comments and shout out your city for a chance to win some free BTC. Now let's go ahead and make this money. So here we go, guys. Uh, this was my intention for the year. Hold up. You can't see it all. You can't see it all. Right there. That was my moment where I projected uh, what I want to witness uh, this year. I am of the mind of the idea to where I, I believe that if you intend for something and uh, you observe something um, and you wish to attract that something, then all you have to do is align your intention, align your energy, you know, and align your reception to receiving this new idea. I said, this is the year Bitcoin hits $100,000. At the time, it was uh, the first day of 2024, and uh, $42,500. As we know, we've almost, you know, doubled in price, 50% uh, gains sitting north of 67K right now. Uh, and 67 is a lot, a lot closer than 40 was, right? We hadn't even cracked 50k uh, when I when I put that message out. But lo and behold, uh, uh, the the message got out to the ether, and now people are, you know, replicating uh, this same mantra. I think it's it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a certain level when something get worth a, a hundred thousand, you know, that make it make it look different in the day of the light. Like, it's a big difference between driving a $100,000 car and driving a $92,000 car. You feel me? Like, it, it's, just, it's just on another level, by definition. And uh, so this is uh, from the Ryan t round table. Why investors believe Bitcoin can hit 100K? What? Soon, right? Uh, this is really talking about BlackRock and a lot of the major uh, financial undertakings that have been achieved um, through these notable, uh, you know, organizations basically buying up the supply. You have two, uh, three, you know, notable entities. You got BlackRock, you got MicroStrategy, and you have San Salvador. You literally have governments now that are officially making Bitcoin a part of their economic policy for the future. And between BlackRock and MicroStrategy, you have two of the biggest whale, whales in the world uh, that are essentially buying up the supply. So now is, time is literally of the essence. We're inside of like 17 million Bitcoin. It's only 4 million left forever. And, um, you know, we know where, where, the, where the direction is headed. Like it, it's not going to go backwards now and decide, oh, Bitcoin has no value. Let's take it back down to $1,000. Like those days are done. Um, so now we have countries buying it. Now we have trillion dollar companies. I think BlackRock owns like 
10 trillion dollars in asset it's literally one of the biggest organizations in the world from a financial standpoint and they have been buying it hand over fist we just had the launch of the ethereum etf uh yesterday so again you have uh wall street you know you have products built for wall street to move money uh through crypto and, and onto the blockchain so bitcoin is essentially even though i said the ethereum etf right that's not necessarily bitcoin like btc to the usd but all things blockchain by definition are uh derivatives of bitcoin bitcoin is the single source of recognition when it comes to blockchain technology it is the longest working prototype of this new technology that's literally transforming the world to which we we find ourselves presently bitcoin is the future blockchain is the future the two came out together they're synonymous with each other it's like the sun and the light you see what i'm saying when that sun come up the light is a part of it you can't break one from the other ever but together they empower the world and they create an entirely new paradigm an entirely new universe an entirely new life form you know for tens of millions if not billions of new organisms forming under that sun and uh it's beautiful to see like it's literally a new world uh within the world we find ourselves presently bitcoin price may hit a hundred thousand by what 2024 by the end of 2024 now this was an article that was done last year this is uh like 14 months in the making so it was a very 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 optimistic outlook at the time but when you go over and they talk about crypto winter it's finally over you know a hundred thousand by the end of 2024 i did not see this article i don't normally read the news like i googled it and found it before i i, I you know so it wasn't it wasn't even a part of my mantra when i made that video i just put a flag in the ground and said bk you go make content this year and guess what else big going to going to a hundred thousand so you need to reach as many people as possible because this is a life-changing opportunity i've already changed my life i'm good you know what I'm saying? Like I can I can swing trade, you know, from now until the cows come home, not tell nobody about nothing and retire a multimillionaire with, you know, living on 100 acres in Costa Rica. Like that's the plan anyway. I'm just letting y'all know. You see what I'm saying? I speak it, you receive it, and then the universe uh, materializes it. Like the more people that believe in a, in a, in a, in a future, the more likely that future is, is to be experienced by those people. And this is this is literally how the human mind works. You know, the, I talked about AI in the video yesterday, and I'm sorry to get off topic, but this is this is relevant. I talked about AI in the video yesterday, and I didn't say this in the video, and it kind of stuck with me, so I want to jump out right now. You know what they're doing with AI is they're basically making an artificial brain. The most important thing for you to take away from this discussion that everybody was given one of the most powerful probably the most powerful computer in the in the known universe for free like you got a brain it function you can read write <laughs> walk <laughs> yeah 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 uh entire entire uh org organs run on autopilot you don't gotta tell your heart when to beat like things are just running autonomously it's literally a supercomputer of the entire universe and so what they're doing is making an artificial version, right? For their artificial reality. But at the same point, it doesn't take away from the fact that no matter how smart we think we can get, no matter how many robots we can make and how close they look to replicating humans. You know, I remember hearing this Swami talk and he, he talked about the nerve endings in your hand. He was like, your body is so incredible. Just the nerve endings in your hand will continue to divide themselves until they are uh, basically infin infinitesimally small. I don't think that's the right word, but infinitely. Like basically they dissolve into nothing, but it's like you can't do that with a machine. You see what I'm saying? And uh, no matter how much we know or think we know about the brain, we'll never be able to make another one ever like that in itself is outside the realm of materialization for us because we are not the divine creator we are just reflections of what was once an idea from our parents 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. That's kind of how it worked, though. So here we go. <laughs> Back to the lecture at hand. Bitcoin uh, could be driven by multiple factors, including what? The recent banking sector crisis, right? Let's talk about money. Now we have a reason, a need, and this was essentially what Bitcoin was birthed out of. It was birthed in one of the darkest moments in uh, our, our, our civilization. Like the 2008, 2009 financial crisis was essentially our generation's version of the Great Depression. I wasn't alive for it. Uh, I think my grandmother was, you know, just barely. But it was like, that's our version of it, you know? And, and, and that, in all that darkness came this one little piece of light. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it held his own torch. It was self, self-evident. It was, you know, ubiquitous. It was, it was the source of truth for a new idea, right? That's all it is, is an idea. It don't exist in the real world. You can't go outside and pick it out the ground. It's nine pages of process that allows an entirely new paradigm to be created and it was created in a moment of so much fear and so much panic and so much destruction and so much depression that it literally birthed itself. Like when you go back and listen to Charlie Lee talking about making a Genesis block, like that's what it's called. Like the first information sent on the blockchain, that is the Genesis block. Like it has to write its own existence into existence. So what we witnessed you know, in one of the darkest times of our life is the birth of a new sun, essentially. Um, but the banking sector crisis is what fueled it. Guess what we got right now? And this is uh, back, to, back to current day, July 12th, 2024. 40 banks suddenly shut down in China. They call it a vanishing act where 40 different banks, and, and they don't show this on mainstream media, uh, but you could pull up on YouTube, China banks, hashtag China banks, and you literally have videos of thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people standing outside these banks, and the bank won't even let them in. You know, I was just standing, and it's crazy how this, how this happened. It's all relevant. Like, I was just standing in Wells Fargo yesterday. The only reason I bank with Wells Fargo is because I already know they're criminals. You know what I'm saying? So I can trust them. It's like, it's like they, you know what I'm saying? Like some banks, they try to do stuff on the up and up KYC, all that. Wells Fargo already robbing half the world, making fake accounts. I said, let me put my little Bitcoin money with them because at least I know what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I keep my Wells Fargo money and, and I buy Bitcoin with it. Like it's incredible. But here we go. I'm talking about the China banks and what happened inside Wells Fargo, right? Um, I wish I had a picture. Like, I could, I could probably find the bank that I went into, but like, they got all this plexiglass up. Like, you can't even touch the teller anymore. This is an old picture for most Wells Fargo's. Um, you can't even touch the teller anymore. It's like, it's like going to a prison cell, you know, and, and talking to somebody through that glass. Uh. But that's what it's set up for right now. And I, and, and I saw it and I witnessed it and I recognized it. I was like, they setting up for a bank run right now. Like, that's the frog in boiling water. Like, they done already built the cage around us to protect the money. Like, we just, you know, we're used to it now. We think it's normal. But this is how banks look, used to look. Like, you used to be able to touch, touch the person across the counter Say hello, slide them your ID. Now you got to put it on a little rack. You don't touch nobody. And uh, you better stand in line and be quiet and hope we decide to give you your money today. Like, because when it's in the bank, it's not your asset. It's theirs. Right? That's why they call it a credit card or a debit card. Like, when you have your money tied to a debit card product, that debit is actually a liability on the bank's assets. Because they owe it to you. Right, and the number one objective of any given business: decrease liabilities, increase assets. Same thing with a credit card that runs on the on the credit side for the bank. It's good to issue debt. It's bad to have liquidity tied to someone else's ownership. And this is literally how it works. Uh, so they talk about 
China essentially being another contributor for global adoption and utilization of an alternative currency. You know, another financial crisis. I talked about the moment Bitcoin was created and this was essentially uh, what was happening in the background, in the, in the background. The big, biggest financial uh, apocalypse, incident, whatever you want to call it, of our lifetime. And it was only a recession. It wasn't like a depression. Like a depression would have been been that times probably two and a half. You know, um, instead of lasting three or four years, depression probably lasts eight to ten. You know, um, especially in today's world when everything is tied together, and you know, just one or two companies like you know BlackRock and some of these other big oligarchs is like if they go down, which they won't because they're buying Bitcoin. But you know, hypothetically speaking. Um, it would be devastating. So these were some of the big names, Freddie Mae, Fannie Mac, I think you remember them, UBS, Merrill Lynch, one of the biggest financial institutions of the uh, Empire State, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, right? Even the rich folk, even the royals ran out of money. It was crazy. Wachovia, that was a huge one. And uh, they had all these mergers. National City Bank, I, I had a National City account back in the day coming out of Cleveland. Um, PNC bought it, and now it's all PNC banks in Northeast Ohio. Essentially, we had a consolidation of accessibility to uh, financial resources, right? Banks are essentially reservoirs of money, you know? The more reservoirs that dries up, the more expensive the money gets. Uh, what this chart starts to show is even in the 90s, like these branches started to close down. What was happening behind the scenes, they were uh, merging together. You know, some banks would fail. Uh, for, so, for example, you had a big number fall off after 2008, 2009, probably like, you know, 30, 40 uh, percent. Most of those were closed due to failure. But I think up here, this is when you started to get a lot of the mergers, the acquisitions. And uh, because you still have that, that the histogram in the background shows you like even though branches or banks were lowering, the branches were opening. So you had basically had a consolidation of money, you know, driven by um, big chain banks buying out smaller banks. And that happened over the course of 30 years to where now uh, we have even the branches are starting to close. And this is all tying back to decreasing the accessibility of financial attainment. That's what Bitcoin does more than anything else. It is autonomous and it is accessible. I remember being growing up, you know, watching my dad grow, go into the bank like that was back before direct deposits. You know, you got a paper check and everybody would walk into the bank on Friday afternoon around 3, 3.30. The bank closed at 5. If you wasn't in that door by 4.49, you got locked out until Monday. Because even if you cash the check on Saturday, it's not going to clear on Sunday. So you might as well come back on Monday because that's when, you know, you'll be able to access your money. And now... It's everything's digitized, everything's quick, and we have a situation to where the banking system is still been consolidated so much to where you can't access it as as in as many points as you could before. Bitcoin, you know, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. All you need is your public public and private key, and you could access your money. Don't matter if you got a thousand dollars. Don't matter if you got ten million. Network don't care. It's gonna honor the assets that you have validated with the network. And uh, as long as you got your private key, you know, pull that money off, send it wherever you want, and uh, be about it. Um, notice nowhere in, in that in that you know in that st sentence did I say get taxed on your transaction? Did I say identify yourself to a private party? Did I say uh, KYC and and submit your bio evidence? Nowhere in that sentence do any of those parameters exist. Those parameters of control exist because an, a foreign authority, perceived authority, wants to control a decentralized asset. And uh, if you self, when you self-identify as a citizen, congratulations, you have just accepted your role as slave in the slave and master paradigm. You know, in this world, there's two people. Either you, are, either you free or you a slave. Either your mind is in a box or it's not. You know what I'm saying? And some people, there's a lot of happy slaves out there. 
whole lot of happy slaves. They watch the basketball every day. They go and get their beer and watch the little football games. Um, they, they love fast food, McDonald's. They know the McDonald's dollar menu by heart. You know, God bless them. God bless them. Grew up on it. But listen, listen, if you go liberate yourself, it's like you got to increase your vibration. Remember what I talked to you in the beginning of this video. It's like you got, you got to intend for something to happen and expect that it will. That's the only way them two points line up. Like when I look into a chart and I say this is the past, we can infer the present. Guess what? One plus two equals three. The future is no longer a question mark. But when you live in day to day, week to week, check to check, month to month, news segment to news segment. Oh, my God. I can't believe that happened. That's so horrible. I don't have enough money to pay rent next week. I, I just got in a car accident. Uh, what is that on that news channel? What did they say? Who shot what? It's like when when that's your world, then that's what you attract. Right. But it's like that part is the poison. You know what I'm saying? I was talking about they can't replicate the mind, but you can. You know, Dr. Del Delbert Blair. Look him up. Dr. Delbert B Blair. This is actually uh, the human that Dilbert was uh, constructed against. Like this is a real person, though. Right. A black guy out of Chicago that was a metaphys uh, metaphysical professor. And, um, you know, the powers that be will often confuse somebody's identity and their name so you never even find out the truth. You just watch Dilbert, you know, look at Dilbert in cartoons on Sunday, you know, think that uh, it's, it's pretty funny. But, but you know, you don't know who this guy is that talks, that says that truth does not exist until you decide what truth is. We have that power. We have the cognitive discernment. We have the most powerful supercomputer ever invented in this universe called the human brain. And now it's come up with an alternative financial uh, vehicle called Bitcoin, right? I don't necessarily need to jump into this chart. I've did enough charts on Bitcoin in the past uh, few weeks. So if you want to see a Bitcoin uh, price prediction, um, you know, that's relevant to today's price, price action. I don't know why this isn't loading up here. Let's see what's happening. Maybe I got too much going. It's like, Brandon, what you doing? You doing a lot. Oh yeah, let me close this. I don't really have that closed. But I will try to show how Bitcoin will get to a hundred thousand dollars this year and what needs to happen in order for that reality to present itself it's like it's not grabbing the data what's going on my guy and I'm like, hey, what you doing I don't know, this training view is giving me some difficulties. Let's try it one more time. Oh well. I tried. I don't know what's happening. Um trade view is Looks like TradingView is having some issues. Um, oh, there we go. All right, cool. So yeah, this is what I wanna show. I wanna show how Bitcoin can get to $100,000, right? Biggest part you start to look at with Bitcoin, it's, it's really two trends happening. This was the first trend um, right here that kinda was the uh, predicate for Bitcoin's first big cycle that we cap, capped out for two to four six on that first wave up here, right? We're still in, I think, this sequence. However, this is where it's sitting at now. So we're now, we're at the two, two to two, four, and it wants to jump up here. <clears throat> that has to take a pretty big step um, 
at a pretty fast rate to get this uh, agreement to continue. Hmm. It basically has to follow this run rate. And now I gotta follow this one. Because the problem is we're coming up on the end of the year right there. Ooh, look at that. That thing just lined up, didn't it? It just lined up for me. <clears throat> so that's the end of the year. That's how it has to happen. That's basically what the run rate would look like for Bitcoin. Can it happen? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this is gonna be a hard area to get through. It normally is, uh, the three two. But if you get enough energy uh, to run through right there, that thing just ran again in the 86. Once it does break through that 84, 86, then it's gonna hit its head on 110. So these are basically your two levels uh, that this chart has built into it. Boom and boom. The problem is before the end of the year. So if you want that to happen, this thing really has to start gaining ground. I would like to see, you know, Bitcoin right now, we're about halfway through the year. That's gonna be hard gonna be very difficult yeah this thing will have to start running really soon 66 so you would need to see it at least at pushing that 85 even if it breaks 80 right if it gets above that 78 79 area because that's where it started to fizzle out before oh once Bitcoin breaks all-time highs then all bets are off Right, so that's what we're looking at now. We just need this thing to get to 73,000, right? Ideally before October, like give it before Labor Day. If we could get to 73 before Labor Day right here, well then more than likely, the market's gonna set on fire and we're looking at 86. Let's divide that in half, right? Around Halloween and if it hits when it keeps running so these are these are your little levels right here one two three and you have a nice little bell curve uh, running up to the top it did it down here so it's not out of the question uh, let's see It ran 93% in 90 days, a percent a day. And this was in 2019, 2021, this last little run right here. So it's already done it. So if we get another 90%, like that's only 45 to get up there, right? And that's what we need, 109 days, 45, that says 70%, 100,000 is like what? 100,000 is 50%. So we need 50% over the next six months. And we did 90% in three months over here. So it, it is possible. Uh, it's definitely possible. When, when Bitcoin gets hot, when the world gets behind it, it's, it's literally unstoppable, right? Uh, it's building a, new, a whole new playing field. And I'm just happy I get have my piece on the board, right? So uh, shout out to everybody that made it through this video. Thank you again uh, for joining me. I say I, I do give away free Bitcoin every single video. Uh, these people have qualified, or I'm sorry, every single Friday, these people have qualified. Make sure you leave your comment if you want to win some free BTC. Let's shout them out. We got the Spizikes in Los Angeles boss walking. On the West Coast, Top Don, Charlotte. I ain't never heard that. I like that one, though. That's what's up. Shout out shout out to Charlotte in the building. Overstand in San Diego. Always holding it down. Appreciate you. Shout out to the West Stewart. I see you in every video. Thank you for joining us. Gainesville, Florida. Walk in the light. That's right. 
know what I'm saying? They said the truth shall come to the light. So everybody grab your shades because your boy that bright, right? Self-illuminated. It's a beautiful thing. You know, we talked about it earlier. Like Bitcoin was literally born in one of the darkest moments of our lifetime. And from that comes the light, right? Thanks, BK. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here, man. Tampa, Florida. Shout out. Tampa, that's a good city. Houston, H-Town. Yes, sir. Uh, anytime, XRP. Australia. We we got people down under joining us. Thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you, San Diego. Uh, PHL to Den, Tucson, LA once again. And uh, let's see, boss walking on the flat irons. And uh, South Dakota. There you go. Perv Australia. Good job. So there you go, everybody. If you want to win some free BTC again, uh, show me some love in the comments. Shout out to City. I gift y'all in the next video. We giving away some free Bitcoin. So uh, with that being said, everybody, it's that time of the day. Signing out. Boss. Boy BK, no matter where you stay. Brazil to Bay. California IA. All the way back out through Jerk Money. Good night, good morning, and good day. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your time. Hit that thumbs up button for a player one time. Do that for me if you appreciate mine. Till we meet again, stay cryptic, y'all. Peace. Like a boss. Huh. 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 Huh.